And I'll present the Allais paradox, the most famous paradox in decision theory. I will show you majority preference in it, but good chance that they are also your preferences. Anyway, I will argue that those preferences are irrational, and I hope I can convince you. The notation capital M denotes a million euro. Imagine a choice situation you can choose between the left option 10 million for sure, or the right option is a lottery probability distribution over money, 0.8 probability of 50 million, nothing otherwise. In this situation, what would you choose? Please make up your mind, pause the video. When you made up your mind, what do you think is best for you? Come back. Okay, I now go on and I will tell you what the majority preference is. The majority preference is this. Most people prefer the 10 million for sure. They really like that certainty. So they say, for me, it's best if you give me the left option. Now I present another choice situation at the bottom, and here the left, so now smaller probabilities are involved. The left option with 0.05 probability, you get 10 million, or with 0.04 probability, you get 50 million. Again, I ask you, make up your mind what you prefer, pause the video, when you're done, come back. So I assume you've made up your mind. I show you the majority preference. Now the majority preference is for the right option. People often say the properties are not so very different, but in the right option get much 50 million is much more than 10 million. That's why I prefer the right option. So these are the two majority preferences. They may seem to be plausible, but I'm claiming they are irrational. And to show my argument, to, I hope I can convince you, I'm going to use the middle choice situation. Let me tell you what it is. The left option in the middle choice situation is the same as in the lower choice situation, 0.05 probability of 10 million. The right option is a bit of a complex thing. It's a two-stage lottery. With 0.95 probability it goes down and you get nothing, but with 0.05 probability it goes up, then you get a probability distribution, 0.8 probability of 50 million or otherwise nothing. In the third choice situation, again, make up your mind what you like most, what you think is best for you, Pause the video when you're done, come back. Okay, I assume you made up your mind. I'm going to discuss a few cases. First, I'm going to discuss the case where we have strict preference for the left prospect. And I'm going to argue that this is an irrationality, that rational people should not, cannot have this. First, we note, we already saw, the two left prospects are identical. They are the same thing. But I argue, I claim that the right prospects are also identical. To show you why I claim that, let us look at this two-stage lottery. The, what is the total probability of ending up with 50 million? That's 0 0.05 times 0 0.8 is 0 0.04, the same probability we saw here. So here you get the, the probability of ending up with 50 million is the same in these two options. Well, in this two-stage gamble, all the rest probability goes to the zero outcome, that's 0.96. So here you also have a 0.96 probability of ending up the zero. That means this right option in the middle figure and in the lower figure, those two, for all the outcomes would result with the same probability, they are identical objects. They give the you know, same probability, same outcome, they are identical. Therefore, I just write that they are identical. But that means that the whole middle choice situation and lower choice situation are identical. They are the same thing. If you say here in the lower situation, this thing is better for me, well, this is the same, then that is also better than that. You must have the same choice in both choice situations. Well, the red uh, preference doesn't satisfy that, so it cannot be. And this is just a matter of logic. So uh, what we have here is just violating logic. This is, uh, this is no debate, I think. I should say that there are some people in the literature who did claim that rational people can behave differently here, that such a multi-stage gamble you can do different things, but I think you know this conditional probability is just probability multiplication. I really cannot see that point. So I would think people who say that they should not be allowed to pass any exam in probability theory. I think it's just a matter of logic and there cannot really be a debate. So I think the lower and the middle situation should give the same preferences. That bad strict preference is ruled out. There also cannot be indifference in the middle situation. The only situation remaining that uh, may make sense is when we have these identical preferences, as I already said. Now, before continuing, I want to tell you the line of this presentation. The idea, so I started a lay paradox, upper lower preference, majority preferences. I claim they were irrational, and I said the middle situation will be used to uh, show you why I think so. 
what I am doing now is in the middle situation, I am considering all possible cases there. For all possible cases, I want to show you that irrationality is going on. Well, I already did it for two cases, when we have strict preference for the left and when we have indifference in the middle situation. So the only thing remaining is when we have the red preference as it is depicted now. If I can convince you that here we also have irrational irrationality, then we are then I'm done, then I convince you. So that the rest of this presentation will be to show you that these preferences give irrationality. Before doing that, I state a mathematical claim. I, st I claim that these two preferences, the middle and the upper, they give a violation of the independence preference condition. And what the independence preference condition says, if you have a preference between two lotteries, if you mix in the same lottery with both of them, with the same probability, preference should not change. Well, for going from upper to middle, that's exactly what happened. We make the same probability distribution, assigning probability one to the zero outcome. We mix in with both uh, lotteries, with probability 90.95 mixing probability. So we did exactly what we did, what is uh, considered in the independence preference condition. And the independence preference condition says, if here you have a strict preference for left, you should also have a strict preference for left. So the independence condition is violated. Well, that's a mathematical statement. And I can imagine that you're not very impressed yet at this stage. Why should you change your mind? What do you care? So let me try to argue a bit more that that is a rationality condition. To do that, first we note in the upper situation, you are saying this 10 million is better than that thing for you. With that in mind, I look at the lower situation and I see in uh, the lower branch here is the same, the same outcome that you are getting. So the lower branch doesn't matter. In the upper branch, if I go from right to left, I'm replacing this lottery by something that you say is better for you. So either I leave it unaffected or I improve. I think that can only be an improvement. You must like it, you know. Here you get the same or you get something better. You must just like it more. So therefore, I think it is rational for people to satisfy what the independence condition says, having the same preference in the upper situation as below in the middle situation. Now, I thought, I really believe that this is a rationality condition, but many people disagree, and maybe also there are many instincts and arguments going on in this situation that go in the opposite direction. So there can still be a discussion and debate going on. And I will continue, I will consider such a counter argument and then say, well, I disagree. But maybe first I say in general, that if you have the two conditions, both are plausible, but they go in the opposite direction, then you know you have to think more. You have to think one of them is not really plausible. You have to make up your mind which of these is wrong and you do not want. And then you can learn things. And this happened to me many years ago at young age. I learned about these things. I had instincts like all the human beings do. But then I saw some were at variance with the independence condition. The independence condition convinced me. I thought that's a rationality condition. And those instincts that I had, they were not really good. They were misled in a way. So I learned from it. I improved my decision making, my attitude, my thinking. And so that's a nice, that's what I like most about decision theory, in fact. But when you have instincts going one way, condition the other, and you learn from it. It may also, some people may think about it and then come to conclude that they think the instincts go the right way and the independence condition is not right. And then they must be able to formulate weak points in the independence condition. But also that brings new insights. So everybody can learn from such situations. Anyway, let me now go on more concretely. I'll discuss the three counter arguments that people often advance against the independence condition. I'll do it in increasing order of plausibility of strength. So first comes the weakest counter argument. That weak counter argument is best based on regret. Let me explain. People may say, imagine I'm in this situation, I choose the right option, and imagine I'm unlucky, I end up with a zero outcome. Then all my life I know I missed out on a fortune because of my own decision. It's myself is to blame that I don't have 10 million euro. So all my life I'll be blaming myself, I won't be able to sleep anymore, it will be misery. And I really cannot risk such strong regret emotions. That's why I cannot risk taking this option. I must go for the left option here. In the middle or the lower, or the mid, I think everybody should agree, middle and lower are the same. But anyway, in the middle and the lower situation, there's always a possibility of getting a zero outcome, whatever I do. 
So if I end up with a zero outcome, I can't blame myself so much. So I will either feel no regret at all or much less than in the upper situation. And then in these situations, that 50 million is such a big, attractive outcome, it makes me go for the right option. But here, also the 50 million is a big and attractive option. But that, here's that's a regret argument that's so much strong going against. That's why I can't go for the right option. Here, here go for the left. But in those two, I go for the right. So that's the counter argument based on regret. Now I'll explain why I disagree much with it. And the point is that imagine you are in the situation here where you have to see the outcome and people are feeling regret. And I say, you know, this is uh, maybe it sounds paternalistic, but that's what happened with normative discussion. I say, you should not feel regret. This, if you, all your life is a misery, you can't sleep. You're doing that to yourself. You should not do that. I think this zero outcome should be equally good as the zero outcomes in the other figures. You know, in, in, a, in every situation in life, for the possibilities that life gives you, you should do the best of it. Be as happy as you can be. And here you can be just as happy as in the other zero outcomes. If here you're going to ruin your life by regret emotion, just stupid, just don't do it. So that's why I disagree with the regret argument. Now, to avoid misunderstanding, I should say regret in general is a very good use for emotion. It warns us, it signals to us that we took wrong decisions, we can learn, that we can learn and improve our decisions. In many situations, and evolution brought it in us, it's a very good use for emotion. But only in this situation, it doesn't bring us any good. In this situation, regret is just uh, harming yourself and you should not do it. So not a, I'm not against regret in general, only in the story that I told a moment ago. There I'm against it for the reason that I said. Okay, now I turn to a second argument to go against independence. Many people say, if I look at this situation, those two probabilities don't dis differ. But there's a, a small difference between those two probabilities. They're almost they're similar, almost the same. But the outcomes are very different. 50 million is much bigger than 10 million. That's why here I go for the 50 million. The upper situation is not like that. Because the probability here, the probability is 1, the probability is 0 0.8. That's quite a difference, especially because this probability is what gives me certainty. And I like certainty. And therefore, here I go for the left option. So that's the reasoning that people often advance, and I'll explain why I disagree, though it's a bit of a complex argument, but I'll still do. First, I'll say what I think is really the good way to reason in all three situations the same. That is, you can ask yourself, imagine I face five, five cases that are equally likely. In four of those five cases, an outcome of 10 million is improved into 50 million, but in the fifth case, the 10 million is worsened into zero. Then those changes altogether, do I like them? Are they good for me or not? Well, that depends how good are those improvements? How valuable are they to you that go from 10 million to 50 million? How bad is it for you to go from 10 million to zero? And also, of course, that the improvement uh, happens four times more often than the worsening. Such considerations you should make, and then you make the right, the relevant trade-offs and come to the best decision. And that's the same reasoning in all these three figures, also in the lower figure. Here you can see, you can take five cases as each probability point 0.01. In four cases, 10 million is improved into 50 million, but in one case, 10 million is worsened into zero. Is that good or not? It, that is basically the reasoning I think you should do here, and the opposite situation is the same. Now, one thing you may notice from the reason that I am describing is, is that here the proportion of the probability, the ratio of the probability is the relevant quantity. That's what you should look at. And if you look at ratio, the ratio here is the same as the ratio here. It's four against five. So therefore, I claim these probabilities, if people say the difference between these probabilities is not big, I say the probability difference between those probabilities is big. It's just as big as in the opposite situation. And that is because for difference, I take the ratio. In general, there is something called ratio bias, and that is underlying many phenomena in many fields, many paradoxes uh, amount to that. I'll explain you what it is, and then you see that it's going on here. In the ratio bias, often if people have to combine some numbers uh, for some purpose, when the numbers should be, when we should look at products or ratios, they erroneously are still looking at sums and differences. Also, the other way around, in situations where you should be looking at sums and differences, people are erroneously still looking at products and ratios sometimes. 
So those confusions are going on in the minds of many people. That's also what is happening here. I think here, if you think the right way, well, that's of course my opinion, you see that the ratios of the progress are what matter. But the people who say the difference between the probability here and the big, they are looking at the absolute difference. They're just looking, they don't understand what is relevant going on in this situation, if I may say so. So that's one criticism I have against the arguments that the counter argument that people put up here. Also a bit of a different, but maybe similar point is in the behavioral approach, we of course study all these deviations from rationality. We do empirical studies to find out what is going on, what is psychologically explaining things. And one of the big clear findings, a lot of studies show it, people do not perceive probabilities properly. People are having twisted, transformed perceptions of probability, and they don't understand the differences between probabilities sufficiently well. So people just 0.05 and 0.04, they don't really understand in a good manner how different these probabilities are. To them, it's just one blur, probability in the middle, you know, whatever you call it. So that's something else. Much Many studies have documented that this is happening in the minds of people. That's also going on here. So for these reasons, I think this reasoning, this similar probability reasoning is not valid, and I disagree with it. So that was already a bit of a complex uh, argument. Now comes what I think an even stronger counter arguments against independence. That is a certainty effect, as people sometimes call it. So that reasoning says, look in the upper situation, in the left prospect here, I get certainty. A certainty I like a lot. Certainty is especially good, special feature that gives a special extra value to the lottery for me. But that's the left prospect here has a left lottery, so that's why I prefer it. In the other choice situation, there is no certainty going around, so that doesn't play a role. In the other situation, I think, oh, 50 million is a very big amount. I like it so much, I go for it. Well, here, 50 million is also a big amount I would like to go for, but this 10 million has the extra feature of certainty that's very extra appreciated. And that's why I go left in the upper situation, but not in the middle and the lower situation. Well, again, I disagree with this argument. and. Many years ago, at young age, I already thought about these things. I also had such instincts, but I also saw the independence condition. I came to think, I think independence condition is the right condition. I came to think this idea that lottery giving certainty is an extra pro of a lottery is something you should extra appreciate as an illusion. That's really, in no way, that is that a serious argument. I think the real argument is those five cases, the positive, negative, how to trade off while well, I explained it before. And there certainly doesn't play a role in it. I think, and now I'm getting a bit haughty, but it's a normative discussion. It uh, happens on paternalistic. I think this certainty argument is for lazy minds, lazy brains. If people say, oh, I have lazy brains, I don't want to think about risk. If I get a sure option, I need not think about risk. Oh, that's so nice. My lazy brains I need not have to do the work. So that's why I like uh, the certainty option. That's, but I think you should, you know, should normative, you should not have lazy brains. You should face the risk that you meet in life. You should think them through and uh, make trade-offs and evaluate them. And then you make the right options. If you allow your lazy brains to prevent you from thinking through risk in a proper manner, you lose good chances in life. You should not do it. So again, uh, I, that's why I disagree with that certainty argument. I can imagine that uh, many listeners may have different views than I have, and even people working in the field who work more than I did still disagree with me. So in these normative issues, well, I've been discussing it uh, up to now from the normative perspective, and I did my best. I think most people agree with me, but not everybody. But also in an empirical descriptive uh, sense, surely empirically, these violations of independence condition, as we find in the LA paradox, are happening a lot. So we have to study them a lot in the behavioral approach. That's what the behavioral approach does, uh, studying, finding psychological explanation, modeling them. And But that's something for other situations. Here, I'm going to finish my discussion of the LA paradox. Independent of what exactly your opinion, I think everybody can learn from this beautiful paradox. So I encourage everybody to think it through thoroughly.